On December 5th, 2021, Demon Slayer Season 2 debuted to an audience of over 17 million people, outviewing the Winter Olympics that were airing at the same time. That either proves how popular Demon Slayer is, or how little people care about the Olympics. Likely both. On top of that, Demon Slayer was the second best-selling manga of 2021, only narrowly being outsold by Jujutsu Kaisen. So it's not surprising at all that Demon Slayer remains one of the most anticipated and viewed anime of the last year. I decided to rewatch the Entertainment District arc for the second time, and as I was mesmerized by the flashy visuals and ever-climaxing fight scenes, I couldn't help but wonder, is this, like, super necessary? Do you actually get anything out of Season 2? And I don't say this to be mean or to put myself out as a Season 2 hater, that's the opposite. I actually think it's important to criticize pieces of media that we like in order to show what was so enjoyable, but also what could have been changed to make it even better. And for all of its great moments, Season 2 had the potential to be so much better. Demon Slayer is a super fun watch, I don't think anyone is questioning that, but because UFO Table does such a phenomenal job with the visuals, I think the actual content of this show skates under the radar of criticism. I love Demon Slayer's first season, but after watching the second season with a more critical eye, I noticed that it leaves a lot to be desired. So let's just get into what's missing, the decisions that led to Demon Slayer's current trajectory, and whether or not we should even care. So the Entertainment District arc starts with a quick reminder of what happened in the Mugen Train arc, which was adapted, of course, into the Demon Slayer movie and then readapted into a short seven episode series. Rengoku is dead, everyone is sad, and Tanjiro, Borfa Brains, and Narcolepsy all pump some iron to get stronger. They're then recruited by Black Star's final form, Uzui, for a mission to sniff out a demon in Yoshiwara's red light district. Uzui is one of the nine Hashira, the best of all demon hunters, but he needs help to sniff out the demon in the entertainment district because it's one of the best places for a demon to hide. The Red Lake District is primarily active at night and people disappear all the time to escape their debts, making it an easy feeding ground with little questions when people just up and vanish. And if we're being real and bringing it into the, uh, you know, the, the adult world here, escaping their debts is not the only reason people disappear in Red Light Districts. Regardless, a demon could easily blend in as a human without much trouble, which led Uzui to send his shinobi wives in for reconnaissance, but all their communication has ceased, worrying Uzui and forcing him to look for replacements to send in and find his wives. Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenitsu go undercover in drag, each working at a different brothel looking for Uzui's wives and searching for which brothel the demon would be lurking in. Then demon appears, they do the fighting, demon gets decapitated, says this isn't even my final form, becomes two demons, they do the fighting again, dual decapitation, Nezuko becomes more OP and a healer, and that's pretty much it. And reading the manga takes about as much time as it does to describe it. It's only 28 chapters, which you could easily read through in just a few hours. And because there's so little source material for this season, I couldn't help but feel like this season was somewhat drawn out, with little to no character development compared to the first. The further I looked into it, the more justified I felt in being a little bit disappointed with the substance of the entertainment arc. Now, UFO Table does absolutely incredible animation for their fights in the anime overall. It really elevates the story beyond what it is. However, within the substance of the narrative, the pacing has come to an almost absolute standstill within this second season. Tanjiro has basically no growth. He does awaken his Demon Slayer Scar at the end of the big baddie fight, but he doesn't know this or even know what it means. The repercussions of that aren't felt by him or anyone else just yet. There's also another part where he melds water breathing and Hinokami Kagura so he can unleash stronger attacks while not overexerting himself as quickly. But again, those are the only two things I could even conceivably consider character growth during this arc, and only one of them is actually recognized by Tanjiro as something he's done, or as an evolution of his abilities. So that begs the question, does this arc even matter? If our three main characters make no real progress and don't change in any tangible way, is the arc any different? from being filler. And I think to answer that question, we need to back up, right? So the best way to analyze the second season is by comparing it to the first and looking at the character development in both. We are looking at this from an anime perspective, not a manga perspective. So if season one has, say, an absolute mountain of character progression, that would set the bar for what we should expect for future seasons, right? I mean, it would be pretty strange if season one had over half the entire story's character development, leaving only wisps for future seasons to build on. That would be kind of weird. Wouldn't you think that's kind of strange and maybe that there's something to look into as to why the show was created that way? But don't worry, there's there's no way they'd make one of the top rated shows since 2019 in such a crazy way, right? 
false. Season one is chock full of character progression. Obviously, we've already gone over this. Tanjiro's entire family dies, and he's irrevocably scarred by it. He trains with Hiro Kodaki for months, becoming stronger and sharper, more perceptive and agile, eventually being able to break a massive boulder in two with his Nichiren sword. We literally get to watch as Tanjiro finds more strength within himself, surviving the final selection of the Demon Slayer core, felling his first demon, and finding sympathy in his heart for them despite their murderous ways. We see Tanjiro find new friends to travel and fight with, he bonds with Inosuke and Zenitsu, and learns to fight alongside them, developing fierce friendships in the progress. His relationship with Nezuko develops from protector to partner as they become a team which can dispatch demons together, and with Nezuko being able to hold her own just as much as Tanjiro. Nezuko is even accepted by the Demon Slayer Corps to a certain degree as long as she doesn't harm a single human. All of this growth and change, learning and evolving happens in the first season. No one would argue that Tanjiro at the end of season 1 is the same as he was at the beginning. He's been through extreme life or death scenarios over and over and comes out on the other side a completely new person and, you know, scarred by trauma, but a capable demon slayer with skills to take on demons of a higher caliber than ever before thanks to Hinokami Kaga. In terms of character progression, comparing season 1 and 2 is essentially a farce. Tanjiro basically doesn't change at all during season 2, and honestly, that's kind of what we should have expected. Not because we read the manga, but season 1 is over twice the length of season 2, and it also has far, far more actual plot. In it. If you look at the contents of season 2, there's four episodes of slight summary, training, and exploration of Yoshiwara's red light district, followed by seven episodes of straight fighting, and it's all one fight. If you're being generous, you could technically break it into two fights when the second demon appears, but honestly, it's an extremely beautiful and engaging fight, albeit very drawn out. UFO Table's excellent animation makes it easy to overlook just how long that fight actually is. We're talking over two hours of straight combat and shonen fight dialogue to end this season. That is absolutely insane. That is a more than full length movie of just fighting. It's hard for any character to find growth when the only time outside of fighting is summary and leading up to the fight, especially when you have three characters in the mix. And I guess this would be my biggest criticism for season two. If the pacing is literally one big fight per season, we can't possibly expect much more than flashy visuals to hold up the series. We all waited around through multi-episode Dragon Ball Z fights where half the episode is just Goku power-up yelling. Drawn out fights is not a new concept for shonen anime, I mean have you seen Bleach? But it does beg the question, why? Why would season one have so much progression and season Season 2 have basically none. Why would Season 2 be shorter? It's a major shift in tone and creative priority. On what used to be about telling Tanjiro's story, it now feels like stretching a somewhat bare-bones arc to fill up a season. And to answer why this change was necessary, we kind of have to analyze the dreaded transition from creative endeavor to blockbuster moneymaker. Demon Slayer is absolutely raking in the dough right now. It turns out that people who are making money rarely want that money to stop coming in. And if we follow that train of thought, we've found why there's no character progression in Season 2. Season 1 covered 6 of the 11 total arcs in Demon Slayer. It is not an extremely long manga, and the Mugen Train movie covered an entire arc all by itself. So before we even got to Season 2, we had already covered over half of the entire story. With the Entertainment District arc done, that leaves us with three more arcs in total. That's it. So if you're wondering why they might be taking each arc, which is relatively small chapter-wise, and stringing them out into a season each, that might be your answer. And if Demon Slayer keeps up the trend of making each arc into a new season, which seems likely considering the Swordsmith Valley arc trailer we got a few months ago, Demon Slayer is only getting five seasons total. And honestly, that seems like a high estimate considering one of those arcs only lasts nine chapters. If the powers that be want to milk Demon Slayer for as much as it's worth, they're going to need each season to use as little of the remaining source material as possible, but that doesn't really answer the question of why season 1 was so plot heavy only to drag out the rest of the source material to get as many seasons as possible. They could have easily broken up season 1 into multiple seasons and gone more into depth into the stories within the first six arcs. So why throw so much into that first season? Why make it so big? Well, it's actually pretty simple. 
Demon Slayer was not popular before the anime aired. Remember back in 2019 when Demon Slayer's episode 19 broke the internet? People who had nothing to do with anime were suddenly the biggest Demon Slayer fans. Episode 19 was trending on Twitter, GIFs and pictures of Tanjiro using Hinokami Kagura for the first time were absolutely everywhere. It was r slash anime's number one upvoted episode discussion thread until ReZero season 2 started. My anime has tons of charts that show how Demon Slayer overnight became one of the most popular anime fandoms on their site due simply to episode 19. When Demon Slayer was being created, it was not a sure thing that it would be a success. So they opted to tell a large portion of the story in a single season, enough that they could have finished the entire manga in two seasons if need be. Ironically, we saw this done with The Promised Neverland, which actually was pretty popular before the anime came out, and then the season two just I don't ugh. but then Demon Slayer broke the internet and became one of the most popular anime overnight suddenly they'd told too much of the story in the first season and now UFO table has to stretch out the remaining arcs into as many seasons as they can movies what have you which ends up with us getting amazing mesmerizing absolutely incredible animation that's probably the best ever put into a TV show this consistently and fights that last two hours. Which again, when you make them as beautiful as they are, that's not a bad thing. But when we look at it objectively, we don't really need Demon Slayer's second season. Nothing happens except a high rank demon dies and a uh, Hashira retires. Those are the plot points that carry over into season three. This entire arc could have been told in under five episodes, but instead it was stretched out to be more than double that to accommodate an entire season of episodes. And we should expect the same out of every future Demon Slayer season as well. But that leaves one remaining question, should we care? In my personal opinion, no. Say what you will about Demon Slayer, but it's a fact that this show has changed the landscape of both anime and manga really forever. The lengths at which UFO Table is willing to push their art to create something exceptional regardless of the source material is nothing short of miraculous, and it is due to the shortage of said source material that we are getting the highest level of animation we've likely ever seen from a regularly syndicated show. To counteract the problem of having very little plot to go off per season, they're making up for it with unbelievable visuals that are pushing the media of animation. While it may seem counterintuitive to have exceptional work coming from a studio that's essentially backed into a corner, it goes to show that anime isn't just about the source manga at its heart. There are a lot of greats when it comes to anime, Cowboy Bebop, Full Metal Alchemist, Steins Gate, Attack on Titan, there's so many anime that wrestle with your emotions, your perspective of the world, your understanding of life, but none of them can touch the uncanny edge of your seat excitement that comes from watching a Demon Slayer fight. And having read the entire manga myself twice, I have to say that the fights in the anime feel like they come from another world. It's very much like the difference between Sailor Moon within the manga and Sailor Moon within the anime. The medium of animation has heightened the level of tensity and beauty and, and craziness to an unbelievable degree. There's a reason Demon Slayer has won multiple awards in anime and manga while the Mugen Train movie absolutely dominated at the box office. UFO Table isn't just creating an adaptation of the manga, they're elevating Demon Slayer to an entirely new level. The story itself isn't the main draw, the characters aren't exceptionally deep, but the animation is absolutely worthy of being called masterful and is in a tier unto itself, I think we can all agree on that. So no, I personally don't mind that Demon Slayer is being drawn out excessively for more seasons than it needs. A vacuum of source material could actually be a blessing in disguise, especially when we come to the end. And frankly, we're watching history be created. A new bar for animation is being set with each new season of Demon Slayer, and any time an envelope is being pushed to its limit like that, the best thing to do is to sit back and enjoy it. There are also multiple manga out there that are just as good, if not much better than Demon Slayer, that could end up with something like UFO Table backing it and launching it into superstardom. In a very short amount of time, Demon Slayer has become one of the highest selling manga series of all time. So 90% of season 2 doesn't matter to the story itself, but its implications to animation are being felt around the globe, and in that respect, it doesn't just matter, it's one of the most important seasons of anime to ever be produced.